No matter how many times you guys are tired of it, no matter how many times you guys are sick and tired of seeing the headline, Vince is in charge, Vince is back, asking me to enjoy the show, you can't enjoy the show. You can't. You can't enjoy the way you want. Because we all know that something devious, something sneaky, something nefarious is going on backstage. If I sat here and told you that now, with frustration mounting at basically, I don't want to say all-time highs, but higher than they have been recently. Frustrations are higher now than they have been recently. If I sat here and told you that now management is wanting to talk to Vince McMahon, they want to convince Vince McMahon to stop rewriting the shows on Monday and Friday night. They want to talk to him about his reckless behavior. You probably think I'm some sort of bullshit artist. You probably think that I'm some sort of clickbait YouTuber. This is in the news now. This is coming from Better Wrestling Experience on Twitter, number one. He said, as of this weekend, Triple H and Nick Khan are going to talk about this with Vince McMahon. The same Nick Khan that's lied to everybody on every outlet that he's been in, telling everybody that Vince is not in charge. It's Paul Levesque who's in charge. And we all know Triple H is nothing more than a fucking puppet with a fancy management title, COO of WWE. He's the chief content officer. He's the chief content bitch of Vince McMahon. That's exactly what he is. Triple H is not running these shows. You could sit there and call me a fucking conspiracy theorist. You could sit there and tell me that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I certainly know what I'm talking about. Ricochet said so. Ricochet exposed WWE last week in an interview saying that Vince McMahon is running the show. All you need to do as a fan is watch the show and you'll see what's going on. Triple H is not running these shows. If he has any say, it's minuscule. Vince is the one running these shows. But now this is a thing on Monday morning. People in WWE are trying to figure out a way to stop Vince McMahon from changing creative plans. Nothing is going to work. Nothing. Nothing will be said. Nothing is going to stick with Vince McMahon. He will not listen to you. You can tell him whatever you want. He's not going to stop. Nothing will change. Now, on Monday, there were rumors that the beginning of Monday Night Raw was changed. What was changed? I don't know. There is a rumor going around that Vince McMahon put Tommaso Ciampa against The Miz when Tommaso Ciampa was the one who was, who was supposed to accept Seth Rollins' open challenge on Monday night. I ask you guys, what exactly did Tommaso Ciampa and The Miz accomplish for Tommaso Ciampa's return? Nothing. You could sit there and tell me that, oh, yeah, well, they tied up a storyline from Ciampa and his last appearance on TV. Nobody gives a shit about that, and I, I doubt anybody remembers Tommaso Ciampa being aligned with The Miz on Monday night. Great, he won his return match, but him getting 20 minutes or so in the main event against the World Heavyweight Champion, showing everybody what he could really do, solidifying himself as a potential main event talent on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, 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 we'll take that away from him and put him in a fucking three-minute match against The Miz on Monday Night. Yeah, that's going to be great for Tommaso Ciampa's return to WWE. Now, granted, Ciampa wasn't going to win, and I don't really like the open challenge, but I'd take that over fucking Ciampa and The Miz. That was changed. That was changed, reportedly, from Monday Night Raw. What did we get? We got Rollins being attacked by Balor, and that didn't even make sense. They could have did that this week. Meanwhile, they had Rollins and Breaker happen on Tuesday. They could have gave that spot to Braun Breaker to sell that match and give it some fucking heat going into Tuesday night. No, that was too much for their fucking brains to, to comprehend on, on Monday Night Raw. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry I do a better job than most of the fucking people writing this show on Monday night. There were several changes on Raw, several changes on SmackDown. He completely rewrote the entire show on Friday night. Bailey and Shotzi didn't take place. That was scheduled as of a week ago for the Money in the Bank ladder match spot that was on the line that Shotzi forced Bailey to put on the line. Cameron Grimes. An NXT talent that uh, Triple H molded down there on black and gold. He was supposed to wrestle Baron Corbin. That was canceled. Santos Escobar, Butch, and LA Knight, triple threat match. That was canceled. We got LA Knight versus Rey Mysterio again. Again. How many rematches did we get under Triple H when he was completely in charge? Zero. Barely any. We got how many rematches now with WWE uh, and Vince McMahon in charge? We're starting to see a little bit more of that bleed onto WWE television. Dave Meltzer, 
Dave Meltzer was on the Wrestling Observer Live and confirmed the previous report that there is frustration within the company about McMahon making changes at the last second. And now people now are trying to figure out a way to prevent McMahon from making these changes moving forward. He redid the entire show Friday. I heard rumors. And everybody's got to be treading on water because I'm sure logic will tell you that there are many unhappy people and Paul Levesque has to be one of them. You go in there and you build. These matches were built with promos. They've been promoted for a week. They did the angles last week and then you just take them away like nothing happened. It's got to be frustrating for the writers. It's got to be frustrating for Paul Levesque. But the thing is, it's Vince. You can't say anything. That's what somebody brought up to me, was like, if you're a writer, you can't say anything to Vince. If you're even, if you're Paul Levesque, if you say anything, you can't. Because if you do, you're fucked. If you say anything to Vince, you're fucked. So you can't say a thing. They're trying to figure out a way for him not to do this. And like one person noted to me, if you, and it would be a lot better if like you did it the day before or two days before, but he's doing it the day of the show. And Monday wasn't completely that terrible. Monday was terrible. Meltzer said it wasn't terrible. It was terrible. It was only the dot, dot, dot. He dumped Rollins and Champa. He got rid of that match. And I know a lot of people who thought, well, you know, it was better because Finn Balor attacked Rollins and that sold the money in the bank match. It had heat to the pay-per-view. Yeah, you lost out on Rollins and Champa. You would have probably had a really good match. I mean, Champa would have lost, but it would have been... I think he would have benefited a lot more losing to Seth than he would be beating The Miz. He didn't get anything out of beating The Miz. He's not Vince Priority. Just like last week, like whatever they were going to do with Shotzi and Bailey. Shotzi and Bailey aren't Vince's priority. Cameron Grimes and Baron Corbin aren't Vince's priority. You know, whatever Vince wants, they're going to put whatever Vince wants on the show. Charlotte Flair got added to the show. Vince wanted Charlotte on the show. L.A. Knight got added to a Rey Mysterio match instead of doing the triple threat match. He's a Rey guy, but obviously they see what's going on with L.A. Knight, and they're trying to push L.A. Knight, but who knows if that's going to be the fucking case going into Money in the Bank. I could see, like, when I saw the unadvertised match when I was watching it, and it was kind of like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, before I even heard, it's like, this is Vince. I know Vince's M.O. with Rey. And you know, almost all the things that are advertised that don't happen in the last couple of weeks, I mean, they're always, or at least 90% of the time, more there, Vince and this, but this was one of the most. Three matches advertised, all pulled, like hours before the show. So it was a lot of frustration. It's Vince, and I mean, sure, there's going to be people who are going to try to figure this out and figure out a way to ask him nicely, but it's Vince. He's going to do what he wants to do. End quote. There is nothing you can do. I have been prepping you guys on this for for months. For months. Years. I've been telling you exactly what needs to happen. Don't answer the phone. It's the simplest thing to do. He wants to run these shows remote. He wants to run these shows via fucking StreamYard or Skype or fucking Zoom or some business fucking app where he's got all his management team on the same fucking app. Don't answer the phone. Don't answer the phone. Book the show the way you want to book the show and leave Vince McMahon in the dark. He doesn't travel for these shows, supposedly. He doesn't travel for these shows. Don't answer the fucking phone. Book what you want. What is he going to do to you? What is he going to do? Huh? He's going to get rid of everybody? What needs to happen is that they need to forge a walkout. They need to basically picket WWE and go on strike. That's what they need to do. This is what they need to do. If you all do not stand together here, you will get nothing accomplished. Everybody's walking on eggshells. Everybody's afraid to ask Vince McMahon to stop or please don't change this or don't change that. Vince made SmackDown unwatchable on Friday. Legitimately nothing. And I mean nothing happened on that show. No bloodline. No stories, nothing. We got a Sheamus versus Solo Sokoa match that did not make any sense whatsoever. It wasn't even a part of anything in the last couple of months. 
We got LA Knight and Rey Mysterio. LA Knight won clean, which I'm actually concerned about going into the pay-per-view because when you win clean before the pay-per-view, that doesn't really bode well on you winning at the pay-per-view, even though everybody's high on LA Knight. The ladies, what did we get? We got Bailey and Shotzi, which had some sort of story building from last week with Bailey putting her money in the bank ladder match spot on the line. We got Charlotte Flair and Lacey Evans. For what? We know Charlotte's getting a title match. What the fuck do we need to watch her beat Lacey Evans for? You already put her in a title match. You gave her a title match and then you want her to get a win? She should be getting wins on the way to the title match. Nothing made sense. Nothing. The best thing about SmackDown was the Usos promo that opened the show. Then going back to Raw, I said this about Champa. You want to put Champa and The Miz in a match together? Yeah, that's great. Tie up loose ends. That's fantastic. But what did that do for Champa? What did that accomplish for Tommaso Champa? Nothing. All Vince remembers is, oh, didn't we pair him with The Miz? And he went right back to it. Instead of having him come back after how many months? Nine months? And bringing him back to the show with some sense of fucking direction and priority and getting him over on what he's great at, pro wrestling. Johnny Gargano never made an appearance. Who the fuck knows if he was scheduled? Go look at Johnny Gargano's likes on Twitter coming out on Monday. He certainly wanted to be there. Who the fuck knows if he was written into the show or not? Maybe they had something to do with Champa and Gargano coming into Monday, and that was axed. What are you going to do? You're going to go and talk to Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon does what he wants. He is the ultimate being. He's the ultimate power. I've been saying this. Everybody says I'm some sort of conspiracy theorist. This is what is happening. You may tell me, oh, who gives a shit who's running the show? I give a fuck who's running the show because the shows aren't where they need to be. The shows aren't as good as they are under Triple H with him running the show. Vince doesn't know what the fuck to... Imagine thinking that a near 80-year-old man should be booking a pro wrestling show for us in 2023. The only reason why he's there is because Ari Emanuel wants him there. Oh, I can't do this without Vince. There's nobody better for the job than Vince McMahon. This is why Vince sold the fucking company. It was never about the sale of the company. It was always about what you're seeing now. Slowly integrating himself back into the creative role that he had. Oh, I'm not in the weeds. I can't be in the weeds anymore. It was always a direction of him being in the weeds sooner rather than later. They need to forge they need to forge a walkout. They need to stage some sort of strike. This can go on no longer. But nobody's going to say anything. Everybody in that company, everyone in that company is a fucking pussy. They will say nothing because they fear for their life. They fear for their job. They don't want to fucking have their spot taken away on television. They don't want to be fired from the management position that they currently hold. They don't give a shit. They're going to let Vince run all over them, man. They're going to let Vince just fucking do what he wants to them like he does to all the interns that fucking uh, walk through his doors, man. The man should be in fucking prison. The man should be in jail. Meanwhile, he's sitting at Titan Tower running these shows and rewriting every show that you've seen since WrestleMania. But no, but you're okay with it. You're okay with a fucking criminal and somebody that should be in jail running your beloved WWE. Meanwhile, we got poor Paul Levesque, who's a fucking puppet with the title, who's got absolutely no power for a second time, now stripped of all his power. Is Paul Levesque going to do anything, or is he going to sit there and beg for fucking breadcrumbs? Oh, please, Daddy Vince, can I just push Gunther and Neo, and and can I bring Pete Dunn back? And my boys in Champagne, please, Daddy, please! It's exactly what's going to play out. Well, Vince is going to run his fucking creative into the ground, and you're going to get shows that were reminiscent of what happened before all of the Wall Street Journal shit happened. It's coming. It's coming. Never about a sale of the company. This man is fucking back in complete power. But please go out there on social media and claim that me and everybody else who wants to say Vince is in charge, uh, think that Vince is not in charge. Go ahead. All you need to do is watch the fucking show. It is very easy to pinpoint who's running the show and who's not. And please do not think that you're going to get one over on me uh, thinking that uh, I don't know the difference between a Triple H and a Vince McMahon show. This is fucking bullshit. They think they're going to talk to him? (laughs) 
fuck out of here. Nobody's going to talk to this fucking man. He's blocked. He's blocked all these fucking people on his mobile device. He's going to write the show, fucking send it through whatever email he sends it through and says, this is what needs to be done. I want this on the show. No ifs, ands, or buts. What are they going to say? WWE, at this rate, is doomed. The quality has dipped on television. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. They need to say something, but nothing will be said, per usual, when it comes to Vince McMahon. Guys, that's the story today. I will be live tonight on Monday night with the Monday Night Raw post show right here on Off The Script. If you missed my Forbidden Door post show with Jesse, go and check that out all on the homepage. Please go and check out the rest of the videos as well. We were live for AEW Collision. We were live for SmackDown. We were live for Dynamite. We were live on Tuesday with Andrew Baydala and TNT Episode 2. Bunch of news videos thrown in there throughout the week with more still to come as we are now building towards Money in the Bank, man. So it's going to be another busy, busy week. I'll be live tonight with Raw, tomorrow night with Andrew Baydala for TNT, Wednesday with Jesse, and then Thursday, I'll be live all day on this channel doing the Road to Elites as AEW Fight Forever comes out officially on Thursday. Can't wait, man. It's going to be fucking awesome. Join me for a big, big week. Money in the Bank week leading to this weekend. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Also, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Hit that thumbs up. Let's we'll try for 1,000 likes minimum. And I will see you guys tonight from the OTS Beer Garden right here for the Raw Review on OTS.